Privateer Text Analysis Environment, Part 1, Search. The main search page contains two search boxes and a drop-down menu. There are many options, but the first option is Search. Notice that this makes the right-hand side box go away. I can simply type in a word or phrase to search for occurrences of that word or phrase in the text. In this case, I'm typing in the word black. I get a list of search results in which black, the word that I typed in, is highlighted. I see how many results there are and how many results I'm being shown per page. I also see additional information, for example, the type of the sentence. I can click the book icon to go to the document viewer, which can be accessed under Read and Annotate. The document viewer is augmented with a list of contents on the side. Clicking on any of these takes me to that section of the text. Going back to search, there are other options in the drop-down menu. These correspond to grammatical relationships between words. For example, I can choose the described as relationship, which retrieves adjectives. I can search for various combinations of adjectives being applied to other words by leaving one or both of the one or none of the boxes blank. So for example, I can search for blank described as black, which receives which retrieves all the instances in the text of black being used as an adjective. I get a list of search results augmented with a bar graph. The bar graph shows all the matching words in order or frequency. For example, I see that the word waves occurs described as black four times in the text. So black waves and other similar constructions. There are 72 instances in total of black being used as an adjective, each corresponding to a search result. The matching word is highlighted in green. I can sort the search results by the type of the sentence, the title, and the date, or even alphabetically if I choose. Additionally, I can use the bar graph to filter the list of search results. So for example, clicking on the word waves filters the search results to the four sentences in which black is used to describe waves. I can filter on other words as well. Back on the search page, I can enter multiple words to match. For example, I'm curious about what other words are used to describe figures, faces, eyes, and mustaches. So I enter them on the left and now leave the right-hand side box blank. In other words, I'm retrieving figures, eyes, face, or mustache described as blank, and I want to see what matches. Click and go gives me the following list of search results. Now I have two bar graphs. The one on the left shows me the relative frequencies of the words that I typed in. For example, eyes is the most frequent with, with about 60 occurrences. Again, I have a list of search results, and filtering on the right-hand side bar graph filters the results to just that word. However, this time, both graphs can act as filters. So for example, blue faces has no matches, but blue eyes, black faces does. Lastly, we can specify both sides of the described as search box. We can retrieve all instances of where faces is described as white, black, or red. We get two matches, one for white and one for black. Part two, annotation. Once we've found interesting search results, it's natural to want to make notes. You can highlight a section of text by clicking and dragging, just like a normal highlight. The highlighted text will turn orange to indicate a successful highlight. Click the highlighter button at the bottom left to make a note. If you're not signed in, you'll get an error. Simply sign in by picking a username. After you do so, you should appear as signed in. And now you're ready to make a note or a tag. Enter some text in the notes section 
to make a note. This can be as long as you like. Or you can enter shorter snippets of text separated by commas to create tags that will help you organize your snippets later and maybe come back to them. Once you've created these, they show up on the right-hand side, and they'll stay there until you delete them. You can add extra notes, you can add extra tags, and of course, if you change your mind, you can always delete your tags and notes. But let's actually add an annotation. We'll take the same sen sentence, but this time we'll add the tag blackness. This tag now appears in the listing of documents. When we sort by tag, we now see that the tag blackness appears next to this document. In the view annotations tab, this tag appears. Clicking on the book icon takes us back to the annotation. Part 3, Word Context and Distribution. Heat maps are another tool that WordSeer provides to get a sense of the distribution and usage of words. It takes you to a screen with a black rectangle and a search box with some options. We can type in a word. What this does is it visualizes the occurrence of the word in the entire collection. Each column corresponds to a document and each highlighted block, in this case the blue highlighted blocks, correspond to sections in which black occurs. We can click on the book icon to go to that particular sentence. The documents are arranged in order from shortest to longest, and they're lined up next to each other so as to appear of equal length. This means that the shorter documents are stretched and the longer documents are squeezed. But in each case, a single highlighted block represents 30 sentences. So the shorter documents have fewer blocks, and the longer documents have more. We also have a word tree visualization. This visualizes all the contexts in which black occurs. It's linked to the heat map. And so clicking on a particular context highlights that context in the heat map. In this case, I've highlighted and. So I see all occurrences of black and something else. The contexts are arranged in order from most to least frequent. And you can scroll down to see all of them. Clicking on a part of the word tree highlights the other contexts that participate as well as highlighting words in the heat map. Sometimes word trees can get unwieldy and so you can zoom out on them. Zooming out essentially shows you only the most frequent occurrences, the most frequent contexts, and leaves out the less frequent contexts. In the zoomed out state, it still works with the heat map. The heat map allows you to visualize multiple words at a time, in this case, black and white. The heat map also works with tags. Now, I'm going to tag some other documents with the tag blackness. I highlight, and when I start typing in, there's autocomplete because I've already created the tag blackness. Now I can restrict the heat map columns to, sit to just the narratives tagged with blackness. And so I tagged five of them, and so only five appear in the heat map. While exploring texts in this manner, you may get curious about other words that behave like black. So right-clicking on a word in the document viewer shows you related words. These are words that have been computationally determined to occur in similar contexts as black, to be used in similar ways. In this case, we may be interested in the related words gloomy and cold. 
Clicking on them adds them to a heat map query. When we hit go, we see those words as well, which we can now explore.